Hey, this is Stu for Love Yoga Anatomy, and to here today I'm with Savas Yanti, which is yeah, cool, which is he's the owner and, and main teacher, I'd say, at the at House of Yoga awesome. in uh, Glyfada, in Athens, Greece. And uh, you're a four series practitioner, and obviously a very fit guy. Because when I saw you the other day, I went home and I said to Lorraine. Ah, oh, Christ, I'm going to have to start training again. Yes, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like, but then the trouble was, that night I had a beer and some of that nice sticky cake that you have here in Greece. No. So, I really didn't like uh, pull it off. You inspired me, but then it sort of quickly went. <laughs> so, it's hard in Greece to get inspired yeah, to from, get to... with the food and everything. Yeah. yeah. So, so, tell me, we'll start with that. You super strong by the looks of it. So do you get all of that by from looks. the practice? <laughs> by looks, I, don't, I don't know if it's strong, strong, but uh, yeah, I get from practice. I yeah. do practice every day. Yeah. But I also, I'm a trainer. Okay. I study that. I've been working out all my life. Yeah. I was athlete before. Yeah. In this particular I, I used to play volleyball. Oh, nice. Yes, I was a setter in a volleyball for like 10, 15 years. And after that, uh, I start with a workout. So yeah. I always work out. I yeah. train. I still train people. Yeah. Like lifting weights and circuit training, intervals or whatever. And uh, I put the practice into my life around 2000. Mm -hmm. And since then, I practice regularly, like for five times a day, a week. So it's almost 20 years now, isn't it? 20 years old. Yeah. 2000. Yeah. I started that. And so, and so, it sounds long, but yeah. it seems like yesterday. I think we must have started around the same sort of time. <laughs> I'm afraid I haven't reached four series, but yeah. so it goes to show how maybe commitment or different bodies react to the practice too, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, I, I believe it's different bodies, yeah. but the commitment does the most of the work. Yeah, like don't skip practice. Even 20 minutes, just do something. Yeah. If you skip for a week takes you back two weeks. If you skip for a month, it takes you back two months. It's yeah, hard. I think it's true. I know uh, with, with my flying, like uh, the last three, four years, I've been flying a lot, doing workshops here and there, and I keep skipping because I'm flying, and yeah, practice just like, just like, mm, yeah, just like yeah, it's and going I really, down. really notice the difference. Yeah. Yes, it's going down. You need to be somewhere and stay there, practice, yeah. practice, 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 and commit, yeah. commit to what you do. Yeah. And, and so what other, so you do other sports, because I think this is really important because a lot of people think, oh, I can only do yoga, and if I do anything else, it's yeah. going to influence my yoga practice. And but a lot of my students, they're asking me that. That same like, sort of thing. Uh, Sava, should I lift some weights? Yeah. Or it's, I'm going to be stiff afterwards? <laughs> uh, I think uh, it's not a problem. Of course, you feel a little bit stiff, but if you practice every day, the body gets used to it doing both things. Yeah. So I guess, and I see in my body and like through other students of mine, it's not a problem. Like I, I lift weights uh, three times a week. Yeah. I swim for like a three kilometers, two times a week. And also surf. I surf, I do motorcycle, <laughs> like I go in the mountains, motocross. Yeah. But it doesn't change anything. I think. If you have uh, the practice as a basic thing, yeah. then you can add anything you want to. Don't skip practice to do something else. Do the, do the practice yeah. and do anything else. Everything else as well. Yeah. And it, I mean, the first thing that you guys are going to think of, yeah, it's all right for him. He's yeah. probably got no commitment, so he can just spend his whole time training and all jogging around. Training, yeah. But you have kids, no don't work. you? you have I have three kids. Yeah. A lot of work, a lot of time home. Yeah. And, uh, it's hard. Sometimes you get one hour sleep, but I, I never skip practice. Even yeah. like I sleep sometimes at four. Yeah. I woke up at four thirty to do my practice. <laughs> it's a little bit uh, numb practice, yeah. but you know well, you, you don't do feel anything. But never I do whatever I can. Yeah. yeah. When I'm tired, I do less things. Half primary, half second, whatever. Yeah. When I'm good. I practice the whole thing. Or, and you do much yeah, more. Power, much more. Which is really also super important because sometimes people are, tell me, you know, I'm trying to practice a certain number of times a week, but I'm really getting exhausted and I can't seem to maintain that. 
So yeah. what do you think they're doing wrong from that point of view? Because they might only be practicing, say, four times a week, the full practice, and yeah. they still find it really exhausting. Ex only with the practice? Yeah. I don't think they do something wrong. Do they practice by themselves? When you practice by yourself, it's a little bit boring. Yeah. You don't get motivated from the teacher or from other people around you. But uh, I don't think they do something wrong. It's probably the feeling is wrong. Yeah. yeah. Because everybody feels tired, but I don't think you're tired at the point. You are just bored of what you do. You have to think of something, you have to find something to motivate you all the time. So how do you find that motivation for yourself then? Because you've obviously kept it going for this long, so... Yeah, I don't know, just to be better and better in what you do. It's, I like what I do, and I, I want to see like going down easier, lifting my legs easier, yeah. and I always work to get better in what, it, what it comes. I think also, I think you're a little bit like me, that you've always done exercise, you like doing exercise. Of course. And so that comes quite naturally as part of your life, like brushing your teeth. Uh, yes, yes, else. yes, yes, something like that, something like that. The days that I don't work out, if yeah. something happens with the kids and I cannot, because there is some days of yeah. those, or in, with work, I feel sick afterwards. Right. Like my wife says, go rest with heaven sleep. I go, no, I feel worse afterwards. It's better for me to work out and yeah. than rest. And what do you find gives you the, the most energy? What type of practicing and that sort of thing? Because I know like in myself, if I do some handstands or I do some arm balances, it gives me a lot of energy, energy. If, even if I'm feeling tired. Do you find the same sort of thing for yourself or what do you like to do? What makes me feel a little bit more up, I, it's headstands. Headstand. Yeah. Oh. When I do headstand, I feel like I get energy. Oh. I don't know if it works. People, they say it gives you some energy and makes you your headache go and yeah. makes you feel lighter and everything. Like, uh, if I do a few headstands, then I feel better. You find that for yourself? Yeah. To like, energetic. If I have no energy, I can't stay in my hands. <laughs> Gets me tired. It makes you tired. Yeah. And so you, most of the time, I think with a, with a, a lot of teachers as well, they practice mostly on their own because, yeah. uh, uh, you know, also at this, at your level, it's hard to find teachers, I imagine, that can give you the right sort of input. So who, who's been the biggest influences on your, your practice in your, as your time traveling through? As the time, yeah. If, through the time, it changes always. Yeah. So like in the beginning, it was my first teacher in uh, New York at Mananda Studio. It's John T. Afterwards, I went to Dharma Mitra. Mm -hmm. And Dharma Mitra has influenced me a lot in still what I do. And I still think of him like when I practice. Okay. Even if my practice now, it's mostly Astanga. Yeah. And afterwards, like when I went to Mysore a few times, I stuck with the Astanga system, yeah. so for me it's easier to practice in Astanga. So, so through, through them, like, you know, through Astanga, yeah. I think of a lot of people yeah. practicing. Like, I, I see the old guys, let's say John Scott, yeah. uh, David Swenson, who was one of the big influences of me. And they're still me. going strong. They're still I going think. strong, yeah. of course. I, I went on a workshop in with... Uh, uh, David Swenson, yes. like a few years ago, and yes. it was perfect. Yeah, which is, is that the sort of thing you want from your own um, yoga uh, lifestyle, shall we say, that you keep going in the yeah, 60s, so. 70s? I hope so. I see Rolf uh, when I went to Rolf. Yeah. I like a lot Rolf. And we, I think everybody does. It's like, I'm the same, I practiced with him for a few seasons in, the, in Goa, and he's just a beautiful guy, isn't he? He is, he is. Like, he is a Clean soul. Like. Yeah, exactly. Very a, soft and nice. sweet. Yeah. Nice guy. Nice guy. Nice practice. Nice adjustments. Mm. Very good with energy. people. Good yeah. energy. And Everybody's so he, happy. He, yeah, exactly. So he influenced you a lot and, and has given you some of the four series postures. Yes. And that sort of thing. Yes. Mm. It's been a long time since I went there, like since my first kid, 2015, yeah. I think. But. Uh, Hopefully, I will go soon again. You know what we get 
as a teachers, when we lose a, our teachers, yeah. we drop our energy down in what we do. You need always to have somebody to teach you. Mm. It doesn't matter if it's more advanced than you or whatever. You have to have somebody to teach you something to give you the energy to go teach it. It's all, we learn always. We're always students. So you need to have something. If you stuck at your own things, you never see the other aspect. So you do your own thing without changing everything, anything at the time. So you need always to see somebody. Yeah, so that makes a lot of sense because otherwise you stop progressing, shall we of say, course. and you get stuck in your own yeah, At mind. your own things. We yeah. all have our path. So yeah. we practice through that. When you see another teacher, you do a small turn and you, again, you go on your path again and small turn again. So you need to have teachers, I think, always. Yeah. And so going, going back to that idea of, of the multiple exercises and things like that, because something else just occurred to me. Do you, like, uh, say, let's say you're going to go and you're going to go to the gym. Do you finish that session thinking about, okay, maybe I loosen up a little bit because of the yoga, or do you just say, okay, that's the gym work done? How do you finish? So you lift some weights, do you do a little <coughs> stretch afterwards or not? Yeah, I always stretch. Okay. And uh, even the people, they don't do yoga, they have to stretch, yeah. like athletes of stuff. Yeah. So every exercise that I do, after the exercise, I stretch the muscle team. Yeah. And then I do other something else, and then I stretch something else. If I do a circuit training that uh, I use the whole body, I stretch at the end the full body stretching. Yeah. For like uh, nothing too much, five minutes, just yeah. stretch a little bit. So I think that's one of the keys, isn't it? Because I think, say, a lot of people that they go for a run or something like that, they go for a run, oh, I've got to go to work, so then they just jump they straight stretch. in the shower, they don't stretch afterwards, and then they worry I about... I think what, uh, from things that I read, yeah. everything changes, everything changes. Like, uh, the workout used to be different, now it's different. Uh, the stretching it used to be different and now they change it all the time like through the searches they do mm. in these things like it used to be we used to stretch when I was an athlete for 10 seconds three times it's muscle team now they change it they say you should stretch after your workout for like only five seconds a little bit just to get mm. stretch and the blood go through and uh, it's better for athletes once a week to stretch for like one hour. So the yoga session, I think, it goes through to the athletes now yeah. more. Yeah. It, a lot of athletes they do yoga, but now it goes a little bit more from these uh, researches. Yeah. Also, the mental side of things, I think, helps them maybe concentrate, control, control the breathing, and yeah, everything. everything. Yeah, of that course. Okay. Of course, but. Uh, I'm answering to the stretching question. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so when, when you um, find some obstacles, say in the practice, so, so you're, where are you working to at now in the fourth series? Your, your I, I go through the whole series. Okay. I, I finish the fourth series, but uh, there is few things to need to work, <laughs> yeah. to, to be a little bit better. Okay. Let's say if you are in my soil, yeah. they're going to stop you. Okay like sooner than that yeah. like I had an injury in my knees mm. both knees I felt with uh, motocross in the mountain so when I do like a, a hard posture with the knees and I turn them yeah. uh, like Viranskasana then uh, I, they locked my knees so I'm, I like I stuck a little bit there because I have to open more in the inner. my inner thighs yeah and then to turn my knees out yeah. because they locked uh, my both knees in. And so because you've got a, a, a background in gym and circuit training Train. and fitness and, and pro sports, how do you, do you think about the body when you're practicing, about what's happening, or do you just let it flow? How, how do you approach things? Most of the times I let it flow. Mm -hmm. I don't think too much about what's going on now where it's, I think if you think too much, you're losing the practice about the body. Mm. I'm thinking of the posture, what it needs to be done. I'm trying to do what they taught me and 
what I see and uh, I let it go like this. I never think about bandhas, I never think about muscles, I never think. I think only what takes to go there. Yeah, which is quite, you know, it's, it's a lot of the time people have put off uh, learning about the body or about anatomy and things like that because they think yeah. they're going to have to bring it in all the time into the practice and it's going to well, confuse then. things. But it's more, I always say to them, look, it's just to give you an overall view of what you're doing and understand little things. You don't have to think about it all the all time. All the time, yeah, so of course. It's, it's good to know. know. It's yeah. good to know everything. It's good to know all the muscles and the joints and how they work when you turn your knee, when you put the head behind, the leg behind the head. But uh, I think you're losing what you do if you start thinking about, oh, I'm lifting my leg now, my hip is turning that <laughs> side. Right and yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. oh, my lower back pushes me there. Yeah. I think you, you don't have to. Overthinking is the art of creating problems. Yeah, it's true. So it's don't true. think, don't think, <laughs> just practice. And so what are, the, what are the sorts of things that you, you focus on whilst you're practicing? So how do you keep that continuity, that flow during the practice, the, the things where you begin to struggle? What do you need to do for yourself to keep yourself calm and, and in the zone? I, th I think in the, it's just, just the practice by itself. Like when you start practicing, it's a little bit harder. You struggle in everything. So continuously doing the same thing, the body has the memory. So memorize every day what you do, what you do. And it gets easier and easier. Easier and it starts flowing nicer. And every time you try to flow a little bit better, at least when you're not tired. And then... And then go for the Yeah, let's don't lie to ourselves. Some days you cannot move. You feel because if you jump through, you're going to break something. But sometimes... <laughs> I'm glad to hear you have days like flawed, that too. Of course. Yeah. Everybody, I think, has. Yeah. And that's another good point because people, again, sometimes feel that they have to practice the same way every single time. They should have the same energy and they beat themselves up a little bit every yeah, day. They yeah. feel lazy or whatever. But as you say, uh -huh. it's about doing something yeah, not, yeah. Not skipping it, but also you don't not have to skip. perform to the same level every day. Of course, day. of course. I think nobody can perform every day the same. It's our bodies like this. It's full moon, half moon. Everything changes. The pressure, oh, cloudy, cold, uh, warm. It's everything. It changes in our body. So and the practice changes through that. I think. And are you always an early morning practitioner? So you say, I would most of the time. half past four. <laughs> I haven't seen yes, half past four uh, in the morning for a long time. And yeah, <laughs> that's what I was talking to my wife. I got tired to wake up and it's night time. Yeah. I want to wake up daytime when it's not happening. Uh, yes, usually I practice early in the morning. It's depending how it goes. Sometimes I can practice at eight, some pra sometimes at five. Sometimes six, it, depending on the schedule of the day. Yeah. But I, I never skip it. And I think like you also, like me, like arm balances and things like that. And I saw you were in Guatemala <laughs> recently, which yeah, is a lovely yeah. place, isn't it? Lovely. Yeah. Lovely. And, and teaching an arm balance workshop. And so what is it? So for, for, for starters, you know, some people are, uh, if you're a strict Ashtanga practitioner, you're never going <coughs> to see arm balances, are of you? Course. Until you get to yes, first yes. for most people. Yeah, so, that's true. But for a lot of people, they're very accessible things that give a little bit of fun and give some opportunities to build strength and yeah, stuff like that. And gives you energy to practice more. Exactly, yeah. So if when we're thinking along those sorts of lines and people want to start doing more arm balances, say, yeah. how should they... What do they want to make sure that's in place, first of all? Uh, the arms. Yeah. It's, it's the most Strong. important Strong thing. Arms. Yeah, people say for whatever you need uh, to do, any posture you do with your hands, think of your bandhas. We always hear bandhas, bandhas. It's, it's hard to recognize what your bandhas do and where is your banda, you know, when you're a beginner at least. So it's the most important thing is your arms. If you place your hands nice down, spread your fingers, straight arms, everything comes closer, then you don't need to use anything else. I think just in the beginning it's the arms. If you build some strength, 
then as you learn in the posture, you need less strength and less strength and you get lighter and lighter. The people, they know something, they don't lose energy in different parts. Like if you get your body close and you know where to push, then you get everything nice there. Everything is if you don't know something, it's sticking out, something is going there. So you're missing your energy from the posture and you yeah. flow around. I sometimes say as well, if you're practicing on your own, because so many people are out there and they, they're doing their own thing because of where they right. live or, you know, sometimes it's expensive time, to go to yeah. the studio or time. That's true. Then sometimes it's worth <clears throat> maybe videoing yourself or so that you can actually see what you look like and if you're doing anything weird, yeah. you have got that outside. Of course, of course. Place. If you don't have a teacher, it's the best yeah. thing to do, I think. Picture, it's nothing, it's one moment. Mm. Video shows the truth, <laughs> how that moment happened. Yeah. So it's, it's good to see what you do and what is nice and what is wrong. Like you, sometimes we don't see our legs flowing around, exactly. the hands or when you do a posture and you're upside down, usually you, one side is a little bit more there. In a video you get that, you see that and then you get the feeling of the right ones. And maybe when it happens as well, because as you say, it's one moment in time is a photo. Uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. How did you get to that you place? Get to that place you it's, move that that's shoulder. what they say, yeah? It doesn't matter where, the, where you're going, it's yeah. the way you're going. How you get there. How yeah, you get that there. That makes a lot of sense. How yeah, you get there. Absolutely, yeah. yeah and so, cool. so, so you do a lot of that sort of stuff. Is there, is there certain parts of the practice that really um, draw you in and, and excite you uh, or do you like the whole thing or are there other bits that you struggle but you do it anyway? I, Mentally I'm thinking. And then, and a meta, mentally I'm thinking of like I think the whole practice sucks you in. Once you start practicing usually in the beginning you get bored you think of that yeah but Practice, practice, and then it sucks you in and you want to get more, you want to get better, you want to try a little bit harder. Then and now with uh, YouTube and videos, you mm. see a lot of people doing different things and you try to do that thing and it's, it's a good, it's like we have a teacher. You open your phone and you have a thousand teachers. There's a lot of fantastic out input, fantastic. isn't there? Really? Oh, yeah, of course. Particularly on Instagram as well, there's a massive community Instagram, of yeah. people that are just giving loads of YouTube, useful information. YouTube, a lot of useful. Awesome. Yes, yes. I follow a lot of people, they influence me in what I do. And it doesn't have to be from just from yoga, does it? There's a convergence of oh. ideas from calisthenics, from Contortion, even. I have a few problems with contortion as it influences yoga, but, but yeah, there, are, yeah, yeah, there yeah. are those influences. And yoga has been changed a lot mm. since the YouTube, I think. I think so. Yeah, it's, I don't know when it was YouTube came out, 2012, 13, sure. yeah, me too. But it's a lot of people came out with different like yoga styles. They do the practice, like another teacher said, Back in the days, handstand, it wasn't even in the practice. Now yeah. there is no yoga class without a headstand. Yeah, <laughs> Everybody does handstand. Yeah. How are we going to get one arm, one leg, one there? Yeah. Back in the days, handstand it was uh, just uh, to flow to another posture yeah. or something like that. And in your own practice, because <laughs> I know sort of traditionally, shall we say, those handstands are not in the practice, as yeah. you say. But do you put them in, in some of those transitions I, I and, put, and hold them there? I put a lot, I try. Yeah. I try to do the first series, all the series with a headstand. Like <laughs> the jump back to do headstand. <laughs> when I, when I want to work in something, like makes me a little bit stronger. Yeah. If you get bored of doing the first series, then I try to do it with handstands. Everything. Everything. And full vinyasa? Full, full vinyasa. Full vinyasa. Full vinyasa, not standing up no. like it used to be on the days. But yeah. Full vinyasa, but with the head. And what do you, what's your own opinion to say those people? So we've gone, we've gone from from the top idea of like putting in all this difficult stuff to now let's think about those people that are struggling with their fitness, their health. They might have just started. 
when they come to the seated postures and you have all those vinyasas in between the sides and then in between the postures, do you think it's important for them to, to keep those in or if they're struggling, take out the ones in between the postures, uh, between the sides? What, what's your point of view on that? In the beginning, if somebody's a very beginner and never worked out before, yeah. or a little bit heavier and older, or has some injuries, I think it's, it's not a big problem if you skip a few vinyasas. But as you practice, you're going to add a little bit more. In the beginning, cut, let's say, every two postures, do one vinyasa, then cut the vinyasa in the between from side to side. Afterwards, add them, add them, add them, and yeah. soon it's going to get there. Vinyasa makes you stronger. As the practice gets uh, like harder, makes you loose enough, like if you with both legs behind the head and you do a vinyasa, it makes the body again straight. Yeah. And you continue. If you don't do vinyasa and you go from duipada to a backbend, you might hurt yourself. Vinyasa helps you, makes your body a little bit flow so a before bit like you do cleaning something. Like, cleaning, let's yeah, say, yes. And then we start fresh, okay? Yes. Then we have a... It's like you are iron your clothes. <laughs> <or that. laughs> you string, you iron it out, you string, you iron it out. Yeah, yeah. That's how I think of vinyasa. In the beginning, vinyasa makes, my, makes us tired yeah. and afterward makes us nicer, to feel nicer. Yeah. Also, I think maybe mentally sometimes, you're, if, if you're finding a particular posture difficult or whatever, and you get wrapped up in that, you're doing it, then yeah. when you do the vinyasa, it's nice to leave that posture behind, behind. and now right. you're on to the next. So it's the like next, almost yeah. mentally cleaning Clean, well clean, yeah, of course. Physically cleaning, yeah. Of course, that's true. And so, thinking again, we stick with beginners for, for a moment, because yeah. there's a lot of people out there that are starting into the practice and maybe it's quite daunting if you haven't maybe done a lot of exercise and all of a sudden you're thinking of doing Ashtanga which is maybe more physical and more demanding more. than some styles of yoga. Yeah. So from also from that health and fitness point of view that you can come from, what should people be thinking about if they are quite new to the practice shall we say? Thinking about... As far uh, as looking after themselves, as far as being able not to be put off, shall we say, by the physicality of it. It's usually when people, they try, they try a stanka in the beginning, yeah. they get a little bit scared. Of yeah. It. Because if you never cross your legs before, mm. we all day sitting, if you never like uh, did a uh, lotus or something like this, your hips are tight. Yeah. When you start a stanka and you have the... Adva Bada Padma Pasmotanasana and you see your leg there, it's, you get scared, you say, oh, I'm going to do that, yeah. I should stop better. But uh, they, they, it needs time, they have to stay a little bit, they modify the postures, they do it with easier way, they can use like some props, ropes to grab the legs probably, yeah. and soon it's going to come. It, it takes time. I say it always to people, do what your body says. Don't do what I say. Yeah. I say do that. I say to people they can or think of, I'm going to do that one day. Yeah. Now do what your body says. If the leg doesn't go there, don't push it to go. Stay there. In one month, it's going to go a little bit higher. Yeah. Two months, a little bit higher. And I'm going to get slowly. So be a bit soft, a bit kind with the body. Don't with the body, of course, with yes. I, I believe in that. Yeah. I think uh, with uh, flexibility, you need to take your time. Mm -hmm. I was an athlete and I was the opposite of what I'm saying now. So I was a brutal, was very it? brutal to my body. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Which is quite common within that sort yeah, of Yeah, in the world, beginning, yeah. As an athlete, everybody pushing you to get better and better and better. Even in one day, if you can... You can do everything, but nobody cares about your body. No. They care about what you have to do to at do the it end nice. Result, the yes. performance, at the, the end. performance, exactly. Yeah. When we think of yoga, what I think I, for yoga, I, I want to do it all my life. So as I get older, I feel changes in my body. Yeah. So it, it's not the same thing. 
So I rather say to people that I've been hurt in my life everywhere. Knees, back, shoulders. Now it's nothing in pain, but yeah. I got injured for everything what I did. Yeah. So if you take, if you give time to your body, then it's going to get easier and easier soon. Without injuries, let's and say. And regardless, because you get injured, it really influences also your being able to practice. So it's like a, a dead end, you know, if you're too brutal with your body, well, you end up not practicing anyway. Yes, so that's true, like that's true. make the progress you that's think you're going to make. Takes so. time. We don't have passion as a people. Mm. That's what Astanga at least teaches. Yeah. Like when you start to a posture, they stop you there. Yeah. You have to be passionate until you get through that posture. Yeah. So it's a mental thing. You have to stay there. And so what about then people, we, we all have different sort of um, mental makeup, shall we say. Some people find it very easy to get up and do something. Some people find it very hard. Some people want to push, push, push. Other people like in the practice, it's like, you know, well, perhaps that's enough today. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So how do, we, how do we deal with those sort of natural inclinations or recognize that in ourselves, shall we say? I think you know what kind of body you are. Like uh, if you are too pussy or if you are like too mellow or you know how you work out in general. Whatever you do, you're going to do it with the same passion, I think. So as, as a teachers, at least uh, we have to see what they do and talk to everybody differently. Yeah. A little bit. To the ones they push too hard and you see they're doing it wrong. They're going to get injured soon. Most of the postures, they don't get you injured the same time. But doing the wrong thing all the time, you're going to get injured in a month, two months, and a year. Almost like repetitive strain injury. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Wrong. Whatever you do, it's the same thing. So to the ones they don't push, you, we have to tell them to push a little bit harder and few things. To gain strength. I think you need to push a lot or to you can go to your limit yeah. for the strengthening. For flexibility, you have to watch out yeah. the limits. So in those situations, so like with the strength, you're not going into pain, but you're going into intensity, shall we yes. say, or feeling yourself. Feeling work. yourself like worked or yeah. tired or yeah. to the limit where you cannot go a little bit farther, let's yeah. say. Yeah. Because the body needs to adapt, doesn't it? And it really is a bit sort of lazy in ways as far as changing. Oh, and, and so the body changes through yeah. whatever you do. So no matter what the practice is, mm. the challenge is a little bit help mm. in that. Mm. As far as I think the challenge against the strength and part. And so for, for a lot of people, when they, they start, if they haven't done anything before, then one of those major strength challenges will be even just the lowering down in Chaturanga. There's quite a few people that can't support their own of body Of course, weight. yes, yeah. of course. They, they cannot in the beginning, afterwards, they will do it. Yeah. Probably in the beginning with the knees down, yeah. or a little bit cheating with the elbows, touching the yeah. ribs, but afterwards, it's going to get, you're going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. I used to do two chatarangas every time. Like, uh, like the like old, old version of, um, of Vinyasa, David Swenson. David Swenson, yes. yes. So up that and dip and back and... Back and to down yeah. dog. Yeah. That makes you a little bit strong. Yeah. If you want to get like a more strong, worker. But don't do it straight away. <laughs> Take a little bit of time. Take time, yeah. If you're yeah. new to the practice, maybe of just course, be happy course. to do the... The chataranga in general. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Nice. And so, for your own, for your own practice now, you're because I sense in you, you're you're not finished yet. You're still very enthusiastic and still going. Even though you're, of when course. you say you're getting older, I'm thinking <laughs> it's not quite the same thing. But it's, so, what are you? Are you, how are you going forward from here as far as your own practice goes, or your own experiences as a teacher? I know you want to keep learning. How I'm going in what? You mean in my practice? Yeah, or how you're approaching your practice and, and what it is you want to get out of the next sort of five, ten years. I, I don't think of getting something now. I just want to feel the practice 
going to my body nights. Yeah. I try to do all the series every week. I get the first series, second, third, and fourth. And I, I have no I, uh, aspirations. aspirations, yes. Yeah. I, I just practice. I don't want to get somewhere or to do something. I just want to have that feeling afterwards in my body. I like doing it. I, sometimes I cannot, and I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> Sometimes it's going for a month, like you can do. Yeah. Doesn't matter, you do something and it's nice, that's something. Cool. Thank you so much, Sabas. And we're going to film Sam. some little uh, workshops or some videos next, so keep your eyes open for those also. And um, hopefully I'm gonna be able, we're going to be able to catch up together again. Thank Cheers. you for having me. Cheers, Sabas. <laughs>